not so much regrets, but there's definitely like things that you do that you feel are not right, but you do them because that's the way you're being asked to do them, or that's how the production goes. Or, I mean, there's numerous times where, you know, I'll be on set trying to lobby for a certain thing, and I don't get it, and then I'm like, that's so sad that we didn't do that, because it would have been so much better if we did. But that's how they chose. They chose to shoot the two cameras wide and tight. They chose to... You know, a lot of that's a big issue for sound guys on set when they shoot multiple cameras. Is they'll shoot a wide shot and a tight shot at the same time, and we can't really mic that properly. You can mic the wide shot for the wide perspective, but the tight shot, it's not going to sound right off a of mic for the wide perspective. So the only option to get that to make it better than the wide sound is to put a put a lavalier on somebody or plant a microphone close to them. And it's a, compromise, it's a compromise compared to if you're shooting that shot alone, you could have the mic right over their head and it would sound great. And a lot of times these are, like what I'll try to do is suggest two shots that work together. Like we're doing a wide shot and there's one guy standing who's very tall at the top of the frame. So do a close-up on that guy and he's going to sound pretty good because it'll pretty much, the mic will be in the right shot for him. If you do it on the little girl sitting down at the bottom 18 feet away from the boom mic, it's going to sound terrible. And so sometimes I can talk them into doing that. I'll say, so that way you get your two shots, but it works for both of us. And then other times I lose, and I end up putting a radio mic on the girl that's sitting on the ground or whatever it is. And, and I don't really like that sound because it doesn't cut so nicely with the boom, but that's what it has to be because that's the way they chose to do it. So it's more, it's not so much regrets. It's more like that frustration of like, gosh, why couldn't they have just done it, you know, in a, in a more intelligent fashion? And then, you know, or, or why couldn't they just listen to me, which sounds so much better, but... They made the choice, and what, what can I do about it? Yeah. And you know, certain directors, certain productions are more prone to that or less prone to that. And uh, I think most of the better filmmakers are really aware that they don't want to compromise the sound. And so when you bring these issues to them, they respond immediately. 